We are back guys for all geeks of bike setup and riding techniques. Let's discuss and let's exchange on the hashtag TrustFab as we did in the last couple of weeks. Thanks for sharing your experience and today we will be chatting about the rear end of the chassis. What do we mean by the rear end? Saddle, bottom bracket, obviously sag, dynamic sag, but also wheel sizes and chain steel legs. Everything is actually affecting your global riding position. We did mention obviously handlebar height, global setup to be able to have a good front load and good stability in the previous episode. Just now we will explain how we're going to be able to ride the rear wheel and load the rear wheel properly while climbing, while descending, but still keep a playful bike. So we have the e-bike here and you will understand that one of the main topics of the rear of the chassis is what we call the chain steel length. Chain steel length is obviously the dimension from your BB to your rear axle. Longer it's going to be and more stable the bike is going to be and you're going to be actually able to climb very steep stuff with the e-bike or with the normal bike to be able to get the good motricity and a very easy rear load. But you're going to keep a lot of playfulness from the bike. Having the short chest stay is also a way for you to be able to pop the bike up, to pull manual, to drift in and to position the bike with the rear end. On my side, I almost tempted to keep a very dynamic rear hand and a very stable front hand. That's why you can see here a very short chain stay and the 27.5 rear wheel instead of a 29. And that's why this bike is a full hybrid on the spectral on here at Canyon. The reason for this is also understand that the 29 rear wheel will provide you a lot more rolling a lot more grip when the 650B will keep more dynamic, will dig in a lot more under braking and will be easier to place. So this is a choice if you depend if you want to play with the bike or if you want to be obviously just pure racing performance. BB height will be very important. So how is the BB height affecting everything? Obviously, lower is your pedal and more you're going to be able to ag have agility to transfer the bike from one side to the other but also load the outside pedal when the corners are coming or in the off-camber. Thanks to Samil for the tip that he gave us in the last 15 years while racing. We can see that it makes a major difference, but the, the BB height is not only the figures that is given by the geometry of the bike. It's also largely affected by your rear suspension setup. The sag and the dynamic sag that you will put on your rear shock will actually affect the global height of the bike and so on the stability of the global chassis. So always remember this, chain steel lengths, BB height really key obviously, the size of the wheel on the rear is affecting the dynamism as well. But what else can we set up? We're going to talk here about the saddle. You can see here the new Ergon Enduro that is actually set up fully maxed on the rail just to be able to have a maximum of possibility to load the nose of the saddle. This allows me to have the bike not lifting and a very steep climbing while I'm pressing on the nose of the saddle to keep a maximum of the real load on the, on the tire. Above this, you want to make sure that, especially on e-bike, the, the saddle height is not too high in a full leg, leg extension. You want to have a minimum of flex to be able to keep lowering your heel while climbing to be able to have a maximum pressure and load. And what of the most important thing, last but not least, is clearly your pedal and cleat position under your shoes. You have to be able to position your feet and have a maximum pressure behind your toes with the axle to be able to lower your heel without too much leverage and have a maximum pressure coming from your hamstring and your butt muscle when you are seated. If you are on the toes, you will really understand that you will use your calf a lot more and it will be a lot harder to actually apply uh, the pressure that you expect, especially for torque and motricity. You can see that my cleat setup here is actually super far, far on the back and you can see that the 510 setup is actually excellent because it's really back but also on the outside of the, of the foot to be able to have a very lateral, a very good lateral stability while you set up your cleats fully backwards as well. All this is making the combo of your general and, and global attitude on the bike. This was everything about the rear end of the chassis. And on the next episode, we're going to talk about our global position. So stay tuned.